Have you ever wondered how you could track objects in text like this? Well, if you're a Final Cut Pro 10 user, it's extremely easy to do this with the help of a handy tool called Final Cut Pro Auto Tracker from Pixel Film Studios. In this video, I'm going to show you how simple it is to use it. So with this handy tool, you can do stuff like this, like this, or even like this. So you can track objects and text with ease. This is the Final Cut Pro 10 Auto Tracker from Pixel Film Studios. Special thanks to Pixel Film for sponsoring 9 to 5 Mac. The first 500 purchasers will get 30% off the Final Cut Pro Auto Tracker with code 9 to 5 Pixel. So make sure you use that code at checkout. But before you buy, let me walk you through several different examples of how to use this handy plugin. Then you'll be able to make an educated decision for yourself whether or not this will be beneficial for your workflow. So I already have the FCPX Auto tracker installed and once it's installed it's really easy to get going let me show you so first of all I'm just going to access the generators panel so we'll just open that up here and then you'll see right there pixel film studios auto tracker so you have a drop zone option for objects you have drop zone and text and then you just have a text option so for this example I'm just going to use the text option you simply drag it down to the timeline right over the clip that features the object that you want to track it's that simple so now it's just a matter of selecting the text layer and then going into the inspector. So we'll do that. And then you see several options available to you. But what we want to focus on first and foremost is the track editor, because that's what allows us to go in and track the objects on screen. So once you click track editor, that will present the auto tracker interface and you'll see the playhead below here. So you can actually drag that playhead. You want to make sure it's at the beginning if you're tracking forward. So we'll just move that to the beginning and you see some other options as well. You can, of course, zoom in and out of the canvas so you can see the details that you want to track. And this tracking is based off contrast. So you want to make sure you find an area with high contrast. So you can use that hand tool to drag around and find that specific area that you're looking for. All right. So now I think we've identified an area with high contrast, that Apple logo right there smack in the middle, the black Apple logo on the aluminum casing of the Mac Pro. So you have two different shape options. You can choose a circle shape or oval shape, and you can choose a rectangle shape. So I'm going to choose a circle shape in this case, and it just goes well with that Apple logo. So we'll just simply draw a circle and notice the outline. Now, if I want to switch to a square, I just click square and I can switch over that easy. But in this case, we're just going to stick to the circle. So just make sure it completely encircles the object that you want to track. And that object needs to have contrast so it can actually identify and move along with the object on screen as it moves in frame. All right, so now you have a couple of options here. You have the type of tracking. So in this case, we're gonna choose position only because we're not moving closer to the camera. We're not gonna do any rotation or anything advanced like that. We'll show you that in a later part of this tutorial. You also have offset position on the X and Y axis that allows you to move the shape. So you can really get fine grain control over where that shape is just using the little drag handles or you can type in a number specifically if you really want to get an exact number. You also have the offset scale on the X and Y axis and you have of course rotation below as well. So what I take from this is that if you're a Final Cut Pro 10 user, the interface is just second nature. It is extremely easy to use. Few more details, track quality allows you to change the quality of the tracking analysis. So bumping that up will increase the time it takes for the track to complete. Although this version of the auto tracker is faster than previous editions of the auto tracker. So now with our playhead at the beginning, we just click the track forward button and you can see the playhead, the little red thing moving from the left to the right and it's tracking the movement of the Mac Pro. More specifically, it's tracking the contrast changes between the Apple logo and the surrounding area. So that's how it's able to see the differences as I move the Mac Pro right in this example. So for this first tutorial, I'm not gonna speed up the tracking because it's not really a long track that we have to go through here. It's a pretty simple and straightforward process. So we'll just go through in real time in the next few tutorials, I'll speed it up so we can get through the tutorial and you're not waiting on the track because it will take a little bit of time to complete depending on the complexity of the track and how long the track is. But we are almost complete as you see the playhead almost at the end there. 
All right, so the track is complete. You could see all the keyframes. See those little dots right there in the timeline? Those are all the keyframes that have been generated automatically. So now we just click export data to export all that precious keyframe information to the timeline. If you had to manually generate each of those frames one by one, it would take you forever. So the auto tracker saves you a bunch of time. So now we just go back up to the inspector. We turn on the text, as you can see here, and now we can drag that text to our desired location and notice how it moves in lockstep with the Mac Pro chassis thanks to all that precious keyframe data. Now, if you're anything like me, one of the first things you probably thought is, Jeff, you need to change that font. And that's exactly what we're gonna do. First of all, we're gonna change the text. I'm just gonna make it say heavy because the Mac Pro weighs a ton. Next, we're going to select the edit text box and then we're just gonna double click right there in the text box and now we can edit the font. So you can change the font type, you can change the size, you can change the alignment, the weight, the line spacing, basically anything you can normally change in Final Cut Pro, you can do right here. So you can make this thing look however you want it to look, and that's going to have no influence on the actual track that we set up earlier. So you can change up the font and the tracking data still stays there ready to go. So I think we're ready to play this guy back and see what it looks like in full screen. What do you say? Let's go ahead and do so right now. All right, so here it is, heavy. I'm gonna lift it up and you can see that tracking data works perfectly. Okay, so in this next example, we're gonna use the Final Cut Pro 10 Auto Tracker to track not only position, but also scale. So in this example, I have the Mac Pro chassis moving closer to the camera over time. So we've already added the Auto Tracker to the timeline. We opened up the track editor and now we're using the square shape tool to drag a rectangle right there on the top handle of the Mac Pro. So as that top handle moves closer to the camera, it's going to track not just the position, but also the scale. And the text, the corresponding text is going to scale along with that handle. So we wanna choose position plus scale for our tracking type, and then we just click track for it. So unlike the last example, I'm gonna speed up the tracking here about two times over just to get through this so you're not waiting on the tracking as the playhead goes from the left to the right on the track forward. So you can see the shape moving along with the top handle and it is actually scaling to match the approximate size of that handle as it gets larger as it moves closer to the camera. So actually, let's speed it up a little bit more. We're just gonna cut straight to the end of this clip and there we go you see all the tracking data there and now we just click export data it's exporting right to the timeline all those keyframes so now we turn the text on and we just do the same operation as we did last time we can edit that text so we can edit what the text says we can edit the scaling of course we can edit the font and the font weight and all the various other properties of the text so we're going to make it say mac pro 2019 top features all right, I think that looks good. Let's go ahead and play it back here on the timeline and see how it looks. That is looking really good. It is scaling right alongside that Mac Pro, just how we imagined it. That is really cool. So here's how it looks up close and personal, and it turned out perfect. This is such a cool tool to have at your disposal. All right, so one last example. In this case, we're going to employ some rotation, throw some rotation into the mix and really spice things up. So here's a PCIe USB card. And instead of text this time, I'm going to use an object. So in this case, I want to use drop zone. So I'm just gonna drag the drop zone right to the timeline, right above where I want the tracking to occur. So we'll just trim like that. And I think that's gonna work out pretty good. Let's go ahead and open up our inspector, open up the track editor, find an area with lots of contrast and use the shape tool to highlight that area. So here we go with the rectangle and it's easy to rotate as you saw there with the on-screen controls. But notice the most important property, the tracking type, I have it set to position plus rotation. So you wanna make sure you have that set if you're employing any sort of rotation in your track. All right, so I have track quality all the way up and we're just going to track forward and you see it rotates along with the object that we're tracking. That is really cool. All right, so now you see all the keyframes there. It wasn't a very long clip, so exporting data shouldn't take long at all. And all those keyframes are now right on the timeline. So we're gonna go in, we see our drop zone there. So we'll find an object. I have a little arrow that I already created. So we'll just drag that arrow over to the drop zone, just like that. 
think I got it. Let's try it again. There we go. Yeah, it's in there. So now it's just a matter of turning on the drop zone and obviously we're going to need to adjust some things here. So we'll adjust the scale and of course we'll do some rotation as well and positioning. But you get the point, right? So we'll go ahead and rotate. It's looking good. And then we'll just adjust like that. All right, it looked pretty good. What do you guys think? So let's go ahead and play it back now. And that's pretty sweet. All right, so let's take a look at it in full screen. What do you guys think? Let me know down below in the comments. Okay, so what if you wanna track something like this, a wall with perspective? Well, the regular auto tracker doesn't support X and Y rotation, but the Final Cut Pro 10 auto tracker perspective does. So that's where this second plugin comes in and that's where this plugin can really be in handy when you want to track billboards or you want to track a wall or anything that requires X and Y rotation. The good news is that the Auto Tracker Perspective plugin works very similar to the regular Auto Tracker, so it's super easy to use. So here is our footage. It's basically me just walking back and forth in front of a wall. But as you can see, as I move back and forth, the perspective obviously changes. So that makes this the perfect example for showing off the Auto Tracker Perspective plugin. So we're just going to go over to our generators under titles again. And this time we want to just select the Auto Tracker Perspective. So there we go. Just drag it to the timeline, just like we did previously. And we'll just get it exactly where we want it. All right, so I think that looks good. So now it's just a matter of going into the inspector and clicking the track editor button to open up the editor. So with the editor open, you're gonna find a interface that is very similar to what we saw before. The main difference that you'll notice is the tracking type. You can choose between planar tracking and corner pin tracking. Okay, so in this example, we're just gonna track one of the bricks in this wall. So we'll zoom in a little bit and move our hand tool to get a point in that wall. And then we'll turn our hand tool off and then we'll just drag one of the points to the top left corner right there to match. You can see that little magnification also helps you in the bottom right hand corner. We'll do it right here as well. All right, so now we just need to grab our hand tool, move over and then drag this point. There we go, locks that into place. All right, and then one more corner and we'll drag this one here. So it's a very, very simple exercise. Uh, once you have everything set up, it is as simple as just tracking for it. Obviously you want your playhead at the beginning and then we can just start the track for it. And I'm gonna speed this up a lot so you guys aren't waiting on this tracking to complete. But as you can see, it does a very good job of tracking on this wall. It is impressive. So even when I move and even when the perspective change, even when there's rotation there on the X and Y axis, it stays locked in. So like I said before, you have two tracking type options. You have the planar tracking type, and then you also have the corner tracking type. So you just click there, corner pin and planar. So now we're gonna export this data back to the timeline. And like before, we'll go ahead and speed this up as well because it does take some time to export all those keyframes back to the timeline. All right, so the export is completed. Okay, so now it's just a matter of going into the inspector and enabling the drop zone. So that's what we'll do right now. We'll just click it on and then you see the drop zone. So now you can just drag an asset over to the drop zone. I'm just gonna drag this back to the Mac logo over and you can see it right there. Now, obviously in this example, we wanna alter the look of the image so that it blends in naturally with that brick background. So we can use the drop zone controls to help with that. Specifically, you can use scaling, blend modes, you can pan around, you can change the opacity. But as you can see, the blend modes really make the difference here. And even adding a little bit of motion blur can help the composite image to look more natural. So what do you guys think about that? How do you think it looks? I'm gonna let this render out on the timeline here. And then once the rendering is complete, we're gonna play it back in full screen. And I want you guys to tell me what you think. All right, so rendering is completed. Just play it back real quick on the timeline first off. That looks really sweet. Even when you have that major rotation on the X and Y axis, you can see that image stays locked in on that brick wall. It looks like it's a part of the brick wall. So let's go ahead and view this in full screen. So what do you guys think about this? Be honest, are you as impressed as I am? 
I'm pretty impressed with the look of this and just think we did this all in just a few minutes. So ladies and gentlemen, it is the FCPX Auto Tracker and the FCPX Auto Tracker Perspective. Special thanks to Pixel Film Studios for sponsoring 9 to 5 mac on YouTube and be sure to use code 9 to 5 pixel when you purchase either of these super handy tracking tools because the first 500 customers that use that code receive 30% off. What do you guys think? Personally, I think the Final Cut Pro 10 Auto Tracker could become a very valuable tool for any Final Cut Pro 10 editor that wants to save time and get good results. This is Jeff with 9to5Mac.